It is not for some collector's curiosity. Hey, welcome to Tales from the Collector's Curiosity. Hey, today we're going to be talking about, well, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this guy's name. Hey, Mike, uh, since you are the international interpreter of all things Star Wars names, say hi. Hi, how's it going? Uh, hey, yeah, Howard Kazanjian is what Thank you. So we're going to be talking about the Howard Kazanjian auction. Uh, hey, more lovable than the child being punched in a bag by Jason Sudeikis. What's going on, Pete? What's going on, guys? <laughs> and as always, we got the space wizard himself going out there and sharing a little bit of his lightsaber love. What is going on, Solo Wookie? What's happening, guys? Oh, not a lot. It's a good day, huh? We started out right today. Okay, guys. Uh, I know uh, this is uh, kind of a, a thing we, we've been talking about doing for a little bit. Uh, I know, uh, Mike, yeah. Pete, you love the toys. We know it. Every, we all love the toys. Solo, I've seen the pictures of the toys. We got it. Star Wars and toys go hand in hand. Um, there, there, there's somebody who had an auction. It wasn't that recent. Probably it was during. Was it during the? Uh, it had to have been during the um, the whole beginning of the COVID thing or somewhere around that period of time. His name's Howard Kazanjian. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Got it right. Look Howard Kazanjian. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Try not to do it. And uh, <laughs> I think I think we're gonna do a couple episodes on this. Hopefully you guys like it. We're it, we're gonna break down just a couple pieces. Uh, start off with some pieces that we uh, either have or have stories about maybe, and then we're gonna continue with some more pieces. We're gonna try to roughly put them in category groups because I think there was like a hundred items. It wasn't too much. He sold some stuff before too. Just a backstory on him real quickly. He's like the producer. Uh, he did. He was a producer for, for a lot for a couple of Lucas stuff, films. He did uh, Raiders. I think was one. He was definitely part of the production with uh, Empire and Jedi. One point, he was the vice president uh, for Lucas Films for a bit. Uh, uh, and you know, whatever. That's not you know. That's a, kind of a small title. But where I think he kind of gets one of his biggest well-known things and, and something fun there is uh, is Blue Harvest. Uh, anybody want to tell us about Blue Harvest real quickly? Go ahead. Blue Harvest, horror beond imagination. Right. So Blue is Harvest, horror beyond imagination. They, when when Jedi was trying to come out, they they wanted to cover it up because everybody was trying to like, you know, I think we've talked about this one and other ones. Star Wars really, especially with some of the prop stuff that Mike's done before, Star Wars really wanted to take control. Didn't want props walking away. Didn't want pictures walking away. Didn't want early releases. Didn't want scripts. Blah blah blah. We know that they try to keep locked down on this. And he was and, the brainchild of because he went to school with Lucas. He was the brainchild of this Blue Harvest. And Blue Harvest is, was supposed to be a D rate. They pushed it all the promos out like it was a D rate film. They did uh, shirts. They did hats. They did everything. They did a, like like an even like a little PR thing for it so that nobody would show up. I mean, so that nobody would actually show up. It was a crappy movie. Yeah, and the no one would show up on set and, and surprise, like, try and just sneak on and figure it out. Yeah, so, and it worked. And so, like, he was the guy that started doing the decoy stuff for Star Wars, which to this day, they do a lot of it. I mean, they get on, they'll still get on Reddit and put out fake rumors every once in a while. Like, they'll do stuff like that. And it all started kind of with him, right? So that's where it was. And actually, to mention that, Here's one that we're going to pull up one of the first items that were up there, and we're kind of going to explain how how these work now. So, Mike, this is the this is actually the listing. It's the closed listing, which means it finished for a blue harvest uh, for yep. a blue harvest hat. Go ahead. Yep. So, uh, so it, you'll see on here that there's auction estimates, um, and the, usually the reason for the auction estimate is that the the consigner for the item has um, an idea in mind of what they want the lowest possible price to be and that'll usually be your low estimate and then they'll try to predict based on the market what they think it might go for on the high end in this case eight to twelve hundred dollars based on prior sales um and the winning bid looks like in this case they got it for the low uh which was probably a reserve sometimes these are reserves sometimes they're not um meaning that if the if there's no bid that meets the low end estimate item essentially won't sell other items don't have reserves, and no matter what the bid is, it's sold. Even if it was ten dollars, it would sell. Um, so in this case, this did win at the low bid at eight hundred. Um, also, keep in mind if you're a buyer in any of these auctions that there's buyers' premiums as well. Uh, buyers' premiums could be anywhere between fifteen and twenty percent of the winning bid. Um, I believe for prop store, it's eighteen percent, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's, that's, by the way, where this auction took place. It was Prop Store of London. They have two offices, one in London and then another in uh, L.A., California. And um, 
and they, they, they run them out of both places. Yeah, so, so really quickly, uh, really quickly, that's great. I love it, explaining everything. I will tell you this, I think on this auction too, and it does happen in some auctions, just because it says $800 as the low end doesn't mean that's typically where they started out. And sometimes they'll even start it out pre um, pre the reserve. So like, I think this probably would start off around 700 or 500. Like sometimes they do that. They usually do it in whole numbers. So if it's like $50, yep. maybe they will start off 20. And they do say that there is a reserve. They just do it for action, especially in live styles auction. They do it so that action will start playing into it. Um, some of the, so some of the stuff could sell for under the winning or the winning bid could technically be under the estimates. There is a premium on the back end, but he's right. There's a lot of times there is a reserve on some of these. Like you're not getting it for two dollars, so don't. I mean, look, uh, <laughs> if you, you go watch some auctions, but also feel free to go to some live ones. It's they're fun events. Uh, I, it, I enjoy them. Um, it's cool. There's a big one. So, uh, there's a big one coming up from Prop Store for props, and it's got a lot of Star Wars props in it. It's going to set some. It's going to set some precedent for prices. It's interesting to see how that how that's happened over the years since the toys and the props have really kind of risen in uh, notoriety. A lot of bidders come out with a lot of money, and uh, yeah. items go for a lot more than their estimates. And we're going to see a couple of those today. Actually. Yeah, we did. We definitely, we definitely saw some. I mean, we're not going to compare the price and estimate on every one, but there there are some that did that. And actually, what was surprising about this auction were some of the prices that came out of there, because as you know, it doesn't always go over. But I think in this era right now, two people are spending a little bit more online, especially with some of these yeah. online auctions, and they, they understand how the auction game's going. And a lot of the stuff that we're gonna go over sold for either the mid range, which you didn't see, I mean, you didn't see a lot of that previously. Like, it's like one hot item would go. Like back one hot item talking, would go. Back. I'm talking about t like 10 years or so ago, you, you'd see that happening. Now, in, I think people are more savvy to it, but you'd see like the one hot item would bring in all the traction in a lot of these big auctions and the rest of them would kind of be tailored out. And the rest of them would kind of be tailored. So next up is, uh, we're gonna cover, we covered the hat. The next one, is, oh, the uh, the wind up. Oh. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Wind up, it's a walking RTD. It's in bag, it's an AFA 80. Um, Mike, if you could explain what to explain yeah. about this item, uh, AFA, uh, you could, okay. Yeah, uh, you so can this is, is. Uh, there's, Sure. So AFA is a, is a toy grading company, a lot like CGC would be for comics, um, or, or Beckett would be for, um, uh, you know, for cards, things like that. In this case, AFA is the leading one and they rate figures based on circulation where, discoloration, things like that. In this case, this is an uncirculated figure. It's still bagged in its original baggie, which means it was probably a mail away figure in some fashion or came with a set of something. Um, in this particular case, this is the Japanese Takara Windup R2-D2, which is an extremely rare figure. Some figure collectors don't consider this part of the line, the Kenner line, others do. Um, either way, uh, it's an extremely rare piece. Um, and it's actually rarer in the baggie than it is on the card. We're going to talk about the card shortly. Um, yeah. So in this case, an 85 essentially means an uncirculated figure. The bag actually has some wear, and they do grade the bag as well as the figure when they're in baggies. So be aware of that. Um, if the bag is crinkled or if it's yellowed, that actually will affect the grade because it works kind of like a bubble on a carded figure. It's sort of the same idea. Just, um, you know, so that's part of the packaging. 85 is near mint plus in this case. Um, it's nearly impossible to get anything over a 90. Um, literally, unless you pulled it out of a sealed case, which is, I mean, pretty unlikely. So, so Mike, Mike, let me ask um, you this. But this so, figure, it is what it sounds like it is. So you said that they, oh, some people, collectors don't, um, and we'll probably do one on this because you know I, I'm fascinated by this, so I'm just going to bring it up to let you know. Uh, some people don't consider it part of the Kenner line, yeah. and a lot of that Kenner line – they consider it knockoff, but for some reason they don't. And the knockoffs are, yes. there's some great funny knockoffs. Like there's some cool stuff. In my opinion, I find it hilarious. Expensive. There are. It does. So this thing was around $400. So pretty much people were out there and I don't think it was <laughs> to be that, but they're, they ended up, I think it was a little bit over what their estimate was. They're ended up paying $400, which for essentially, I mean, it's not classified. This is not classified as a knockoff. Don't get me wrong. It is not classified as a knockoff. But essentially, it's kind of a knockoff, isn't it? It is. Takaro, Takaro was the official 
figure distributor in Japan for the Kenner Star Wars figures. Mm -hmm. They decided to make an additional item and cart it similar to what the Kenner figures looked like um, and also bag it and put it in uh, mail aways as well. Um, so in, in, in a very loose sense, it is part of the line because Takara was the official Kenner arm in Japan, mm -hmm. but it isn't one of the carded Kenner figures. Um, there's really only one foreign figure in the black carded line of 80s, 70s and 80s figures that would be considered part of the line, and that's Yak Face. Um, and that was only available in European markets and in Canada. Um, this particular figure, some people go crazy for it and consider it to be part of the line. I'm collecting a carded set. I do not consider the Takara wind up as part of that set um, because it's not a Kenner product. Excellent. So. Cool. Um, all right, so but let's get into the next one. We don't they, they didn't actually have the US version of this, but the next thing that they did have uh, that we're going to kind of talk about, uh, you kind of alluded to it already. It's in the line. It's the Canadian carded walking wind up uh, R2D2 figure. This Wait, one where actually, is this from? Yep, Canada. Canada. Oh, yeah. Canada. Yeah. Did I say Canadian wrong? No, you said yep. Canada, but you forgot the A. Oh, A. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Canadian. You didn't say we're close to them so over this is here. The I mean, Canadian, the Canadian distributed. Yeah. One, yeah. It's still made by Takara Japan, um, but marketed for Canadian market. Um, there are various alterations on the card. One of them says Canada uh, down in the fine print down there, which is hard to see at the moment. Right under where it says uh, Merchant uh, Remonter, which uh, is <laughs> French. Um, under there, it'll say can uh, Canadian. There's different card text on some of these. The the picture above, sort of the walking picture, is the same on all the cards. But this an extremely rare carded figure. Again, like the baggied one, this is this is the same figure, um, and also not as um, considered part of the Kenner line like some of the others, but it's so rare that people will pay all kinds of money for this thing. It just doesn't pop up in a card. As you can see, this was only at 60, an uh, excellent. Um, and, uh, and it, so those little, those other little things down there, C60, B70 and F85, um, those stand for c like color bubble, the card, uh, whether it's, whether it's yeah, yellow or not. Um, and then the figure itself. So you got the you got the card that's C, you got the B that's bubble, and then F is figure. So they're rating all three pieces. So if the card has wear, but the figure's mint, um, or if the bubble has wear, or it's dented, or it's cracked, but the figure's mint, you know those those sort of things all all get pushed into the grade, the final grade in this case, which is a sixty. But either way, this thing's so rare, just finding a sealed example is unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, so, so, but this is, does anybody know the answer to this? And maybe it's, it's something Mike, that's great. Yeah, I appreciate that. It was really cool to see the B and the F pointing that out, but is the 60 overall? Cause it's on the card. Cause like, look, man, you got an 85 on the figure. That seems pretty dope, but like two, that's yeah. kind of tough to grade in. So it is a little subjective, I guess. Like, yeah. I mean, how, wouldn't you think the figure would be not, Hey, I mean, it's near min plus, right? 85 is near min plus. Anyways, I don't know how you didn't give it 90 on that. Maybe 85 is the top end of that, but the rest of it how do you get a 60 overall because i'm not great at i think the thing yeah you're right that's not the average here the average would be 75 ish right but mm -hmm. yeah. um i think that the 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 idea behind i think most of the grading for figures is that the figures themselves in this case not so much but in general the figures loose are common but still sealed on their packaging is much much rarer so packaged collectors are usually a lot more interested in the condition of the packaging and the figure inside. Um, now that said, in this case, you have an uncirculated, essentially mint figure inside a sealed bubble. Uh, you know, some people would say, break the thing open and sell sell the uncirculated figure, probably make more off of it. But in this case, it's such a I rare example of such a rare figure. I know that would be killer, right? You don't do it. I'm yeah. not suggesting anybody does that. But there's it's the idea that the figure is more common. It's not in this so, case. But can I ask you one more question, real quickly? I kind of think I know the answer on this one, but I'm just going to double check for everybody else out there because it's probably a question on a lot of people's minds. Do you think they consider this more of the Kenner line because it actually there was there was an actual Kenner product that came to the U.S. that that they did for this, and it was the this actual one without saying can, Canadian and uh, the French at the bottom of the of the card, correct? Still, it's still not produced by Kenner, though. It's still produced by Takara. 
Right. That's what I'm saying. Sakara originally produced it. So they that's why maybe they consider this more of a Kenner product than this makes me think of the Transformer thing. Like Transformers had like those South American issues where you know South America had their own versions of Transformers, but they recolored mm -hmm. some of the figures. They were the official licensor of Transformers in South America, very much like the ones up in the US, but they kind of were their own thing. So I wouldn't consider it part of the same line per se, but yeah. it is an interesting little side fact. But I, I mean when they so they when they grade it, um when they grade the when they grade the Canadian version though, they grade like I'm gonna pull up the things again. When they are grading the loose one, uh, or the bagged one, the one that we assume was sold in Asia or was in a mail away in Asia, it is not listed as a Kenner product. It actually isn't. Where if you pull up the listing for the, uh, you know, and they gave it the green label, when you pull up the listing for the red one, it 100% is listed mm -hmm. as a uh, as a Kenner product. You know, so I think there's a difference there yeah. too. Like that's why I was kind of I know knockoff's not exactly the correct the correct word for the the first. Yeah. Another intermingle. Yeah. It's cross. It's cross licensing. So Takara makes the figure and then distributes it through Kenner because Kenner makes their figures and distributes them through Takara in Japan. So it's sort of this symbiotic relationship between the two companies. Um, and it, it's an it's an odd figure. There's no doubt about it. There's I mean, trust me. If someone handed me one, I would keep the damn oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to go spend thousands well, of dollars. Yeah, on that's not the only figure either. As I, I'm <laughs> well, checking out my list here of the figures. That's yeah. not the only one. Yeah. No, but so for the Canadian one no. too, because you just said thousands of dollars, and everybody's like, "What's he talking about?" The one bag one sold. So well, there Canadian is another one. Kenner version, Canadian Kenner version of of figures. Kenner, Kenner Canada. So, but that yeah. one right there, that one that they made, that one that sold at auction in in the in the Howard auction, that one sold for three thousand dollars. So that grade right yep. there, so a grade is sixty. I'm not sure if you took it out of the package, you're selling it for three thousand dollars. I'm really no. not. So I mean, that's where no, we're you're at. not three K for that. Just no, so I... you know. Yep. All right. Next. It's up, crazy. Have... I mean, it's it's crazy. Next up, we have something a little bit that I that I like to, that I got to talk about and maybe give a little backstory here too. Uh, this here is hmm. the land of J uh, Jawas. It's a lot of cardboard, so it's like a piece of plastic. And they did a bunch of these sets where it's plastic and they use cardboard, and it was kind of take off of other stuff that Kenner was doing already. <laughs> Um, there's a piece in it. If you look in the middle, there's a gray piece and it's the capsule uh, that the droids land in. And why that piece is interesting is because a lot of times when you find these at like, or in my experience, when you find these in garage sales or at estate sales or in flea markets, you will find the box, you'll find the directions, you'll find the piece of plastic, the plastic thing that the uh, crawler goes on to, you'll find all the cardboard pieces and all the instructions. The one thing that will be missing is that piece. And if you're in these, if you go to these, you know, garage sales, estate sales or whatever, it happens a lot with some of these, especially with some of these uh, Star Wars toys. You need to look around and just see if you can find that capsule because the capsule does sell by itself, but it also completes sets. Now this set, because it was like pretty much mint in box was 200, but I know that with the capsule, you know, you're looking at a $50, $70 set with it in it. You're looking at like $10, $20 for the capsule in itself. Because actually, believe it or not, a lot of that cardboard's around. It's, it wasn't something – because people would take it apart and store it back in it, but it's in there. And this is kind of cool because, like, to me, it means a lot because one of the reasons – like, I didn't actually know Mike and Pete before this show. The only reason I knew about them was because of the thing they did in Toy Informer. And I really was semi-jokingly angry with Mike. And, and I said I had to get him on the toy shows because of this is because – he did a piece, on, and this is a similar piece that goes to that. It, it was the Death Star. And, and the Death Star that came out around the same time was also very – in the toy market today wouldn't be considered great. It, it's like the inner working. It's a quarter piece of plastic that goes all the way up. It has got the trash compactor in it. But the one thing that, that Mike pointed out in there was the trash monster. And it starts with a D. I know I'm going to kill that name. So Mike, give me the name of it. <laughs> The, what do you call the Dianoga? It? The Dianoga. The Dianoga. Thank you. So the Dianoga. Dianoga. He brought, up, he brought yeah. up the fact that like, hey guys, when you're looking through random toy lots, look for this Dianoga. And the Dianoga, it looks kind of like um, the Loch Ness Monster, greenish. It's kind of funny looking. It doesn't look like a typical Star Wars toy. And they go for a lot, especially in really good condition because they got separated a lot from it. Yeah. And that's kind of to come back to the Jawa thing. Yep. That's something you got to look for. So if you're going out there and you're hunting and you see one of these – Make sure it has that that uh, escape pod in it. If you get the Death Star, make sure it has that character. And if it doesn't, uh, 
I would go search for that before I actually purchase the thing. And if you lose out, no, on no, no, I'd still buy it, man. It's still a fun yeah. toy. <laughs> no, I mean, I would. No, I, it is. It is. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is like, it's a fun toy, but, but know this people out there know that those pieces are missing and, yeah. and they will go find them. Usually they're put, usually they're put in like the 25 cent or the mix bags or the, so if you see a mix bag with one of those in there for like a dollar, yeah. pick it up, man. Because it's worth yeah. it. I mean, Absolutely. you're gonna you're gonna have to fit because you'll yeah. go around, you'll find the other ones. It's more rare to find a completely set up with those pieces in it than it is to not. So that's just my PSA for the day on that. Yeah, that's a um, definitely a good tip. That loose stuff, yeah. like loose weapons, loose little pieces like that, random things. People might not know what they are. They throw it in a junkie box, like on the side. You got to look for it to complete the set you might be buying, yeah. or you can just look for it on its own. Because, like you said, that piece might be worth more than the whole set on its own in a lot of cases. Yeah, the, the it, I mean, little, it's not more. But little it's, luggage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of. There's a lot of luggage. examples of that. Yeah, little yeah, you got like a little, train, a little training ball. Yeah, the Jedi train. Yeah. Hey, the you luggage in the day of the system, the chin, the chin guns on the ad app. Really quickly, yeah. really quickly, if you guys want us to do a video on that, maybe we will anyways, but put it down <laughs> in the comment section. Maybe we'll do a like, look for these in the like throwaway bins and we'll go over a couple pieces where that is. But I just wanted to give a little backstory on that too. And that's kind of how I got yep. a, a couple of these guys on the show and I uh, really didn't know them. Really glad I did. But uh, that was one where I was like, man, please don't put that out there because I don't want people to know that because that makes a good money off the trash monster, bro. It's like it is what it is. But no, that's good. sorry, so, man. No, we're good. So next up, though, we'll give it we'll give it to Mike. One, uh, one. I think he's got a little bit on this. This is the open belly tauntaun, not the riding tauntaun uh, that you see a lot of times with the trapper, but yes. the, the open belly. Yes. This sold for three hundred dollars. It was in box. Uh, it was opened already, though. It, it, they opened a lot of these boxes or they were cracked already. So the boxing isn't the best on a lot of these. But go ahead. Let's give a little uh, – let's give it out to Mike because I think he's got one live for us. Hey, hey, wait, wait, Mike. Hey, Pete, do you know the internal yeah. temperature of a tauntaun? <laughs> I do not know the internal temperature, but – Lukewarm. Lukewarm. <laughs> oh, after that. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Go that's terrible. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so I have one. I have one live here. This one's also an open box. It's in pretty good shape, though, um, considering. But the the story behind this is this is the first Star Wars toy I ever bought, and uh, the, and the reason why is because I actually saw uh, saw Empire Strikes Back in the theater, um, and the only scene I remembered at that age because I was only four years old was the open belly Tauntaun Luke lukewarm scene uh, i guess it maybe it traumatized me i don't know but then i went to a child world i went to a child world that next year um, and i say the next year because the original 1980 version of the toy does not have an open belly it's a solid plastic belly um, the second release of it is this open belly tauntaun in 1981 um, and this is actually the more sought after version because it has extra play value um, it is clearly um it's just a cooler toy in general. Um, but either way, I remember, even, I can still remember to this day where in the store it was. It was on an end cap in the last aisle um, in the sort of section back uh, in a place called Child World in Connecticut. And I remember it was either that or I was going to buy the um, – uh, the web, the 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 web cannon from Empire, and I asked my brother. I'm like, Dave, should I? Uh, which one should I get? Because you got to get the Tauntaun. So that was my first toy. Was the open belly Tauntaun, and then from there on out, he and I collected enough so that we would have a complete set of everything. Uh, and so the open belly, belly Tauntaun has a has a huge nostalgic place in my heart it is not a terribly rare toy what is rare though is the reins uh, the sort of the the riding reins to find those unbroken is really really tough um so that's that's another thing to keep in mind um and when you're looking again, at this toy make another, sure that the reins are in there there's another piece that they're not broken just like the luggage on dagobah just like the the dianaga dia uh in trash the monster. trash monster yeah. dia, dia. <laughs> um, that's those reins are another piece. They're gone. You can find the tauntauns a lot of times secondhand, but the reins are gone. Hey, Mike, there's a, there's two different tauntauns though, correct? There was the 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 hinge tauntaun. Yes. And there's open belly tauntaun, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. So there's the so um so when he's talking about hinged, I'm pulling it out of the baggie right now. So you've got you've got on the original one. The bottom here is – this is solid plastic on the original one. This now is rubber. It's like a, a rubber piece, and you can fit a figure inside the hollow body. Um, the hinged version 
what he's saying is that the you put the figure in the top in this like hinged door, right? Mm -hmm. um, you sit the legs inside, and it functions mm -hmm. on a, a spring-loaded hinge. Yeah. Um, and so the the original version had that, but it did not have the underbelly that opened up. It just had a plain plastic belly. That was the 1980 version. This is the 1981 version. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Yeah. It, it has a creepy picture of a creepy Luke being birthed out of the bottom of it on the on the, on the cover. So. Oh yeah, it does. It's uh, it's uh, it's right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, uh, let's see if I can get it clear. There, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Down, down, <laughs> down there, you got you got Luke coming out of the hole. It's pretty gross. Hey, but it's yeah. A boy. yeah I mean, like, uh, the, that, that rubber too. So like when you're talking about the rings, uh, another common snap in that is in, in in both versions of the Tauntaun. For some reason, the first Tauntaun, I don't see a lot of the snapping of the rings. It seems to be a particular problem with the set with the open ended, the open belly one. The particular problem I see yeah. in both of them though is there's an underlapping latch. Could you pull? Do you still have that out again? Could you pull yes. it out again, Mike? Yeah, I'll pull it. Yeah, I'll pull it out. And the no, same, no, the same problem is true for the dude. Yeah, the do. Yeah, you it's right here. Find it with the yep. back. So, so the do back also has this same clasp mechanism down here. Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. uh, on both the do back and the tauntaun, yep. uh, because you know yeah. that's where a kid would take it off. That's where a kid would take it off the toy, and as he popped it open, it would sometimes break. So on this, uh, and again, and the same too, mechanism on the do back. I think it was a lot of clipping too, because I think when, how you put the inserts into the. Um, the, the hinge, there would be a lot of clipping because if it didn't sit properly, the toy would catch it or you'd also catch it on the back end of the hinge, which would cause strain. And they did make it really tight on it. It's yep. not as loose as you think. So I think there's a couple issues with that. So Correct. also something to look for if you see them around, especially if they hinge up. Even if they don't, though, people will want them because especially on the do-back, good luck finding it. Yeah. Good luck. I mean, that's I'm not trying to be negative or anything, but that just, it is what it is. So that, hey, look, that right there in box, kind of like how he has, uh, $300. Um, that's a nice little pickup there, Mike. Good job on that. Next, Thanks. we have uh, we have the uh, Jawa, the sand crawler, the remote oh. control one. Uh, this is a monster. <laughs> Man. I think so. I think so. Wookie can kind of cover this one. This one went through three thousand, by the way, just to let you know. <sighs> oh. wow. wow. Yeah, that's crazy. crazy. So this one hurts, and I say it hurts because there's a picture somewhere in this house of me Christmas Day opening up this very toy and and holding it big smile um i probably had a beard then too even though i was <laughs> very young uh and it was in grand forks north dakota and i had this toy forever i played with it to death i have no idea where this toy went but one of my favorite parts about this toy is that i remember it so well um the form of it toss that picture back up again the form of it, the way that nose cone was, was always a little catty wonky on it. And the way that door came down, the door always popped off. Um, now, on the back of this, there is a card that you can slide onto the the fortress itself. And, and it has just a, a backdrop scene of... Um, Tatooine and in the desert and stuff and so as it's rolling down you know it, it, <clears throat> across your carpet or whatever area and preface you are remote controlling it in it totally has this backdrop scene of the desert which I thought as a kid was just so believable and the next greatest thing in the world um and of course, you, if you get this toy, you have to try and get all the droids and Jawas, and so you have ten Jawas and two three POs <laughs> and a protocol droid and, and all of that as well. So, um, great toy, really just fun and and such a classic part, key part of that movie itself. Um, and it's funny you bring up so like the backdrop, the backdrop portion for a lot of these early on toys. They did Kenner did a lot of that, the cardboard backdropping mm -hmm. on that. Maybe that's I mean, that'll be tough to go through all that, but there's a lot of them, so you'll hear that read it. But the other thing that you'll hear that you brought up a good point is a lot of their so they used a lot of the same style of building some of these toys. So like that drop open hinge portion was also used in a in a pretty famous toy, a pretty popular toy. I know everybody's shaking their head right now. We know what toy that is, the Atat. They used it, and it was the same type of problem. They had that they had that drop yep. off in the ATAT a ton too, especially because it's suspended so high. 
Um, so look for yeah. those doors too, because sometimes they're separated. That's another one of those ones there. Now the next picture that we're going to show you, you're going to be like, "What? This is yeah, okay." But uh, <laughs> here, we <go. laughs> here we go. The next picture we're going to show you is the uh, glass set. Uh, it's the uh, Burger King glass set. Uh, this is box still, like it came in for the promo thing. Um, it's not how they always gave it to you. Yep, there you go. If you people, guys have a set, people set up please, I know a Wookiee looking for one. I'm trying to buy a set off of possibly a mutual friend that we know. I think he there's somebody by, we know who has a couple of them. Yeah, yeah he goes by Clay MC. And, um, <laughs> he comes on the show every once in a while. Once in a while, you might see his handsome face and his blowing <laughs> Wookiee fur in this fan. Yeah, there's the whole set right there. Mike's got him. Yeah, uh, this, good yeah, the set went for 150. So it's not something. I mean, look, I'm not playing everybody's pocketbooks here, but like to find a find a good clean set still in the box for 150, you can still find these out there. There were there was a lot of them, and people around the time it was the collector glass error. So they there was a lot of them still out there. It's something you can find and kind of piece together and hunt down if you're one of those hunters, one of those hunter collectors. If you're a collector, the, uh, a little bit of I think curiosity, that, you can go get them. Go ahead, Mike. The big thing about this, the big thing about this particular lot isn't the glasses. The glasses themselves are pretty common. They're actually pretty resilient. Um, they don't really break all that easily. So finding them is pretty easy to find between like 10, 15, 20 bucks a glass. But the real, I think the real push for this particular lot was the box. Um, keep in mind that they were from Burger King. They were shipped to Burger King in those boxes, then removed, and you were given one, unless you bought all four. So if you bought all four, then you might actually get the case the ca that they came in. In this case, it was a sealed case. So honestly, there are people that just collect sealed vintage Star Wars shipping crates. And or, cases, if you, or if you work uh, there, it's kind of like the back store. You know, there's, there's, there was a lot of stuff in that era that uh, walked well, out yeah. the back door. Yeah. Those guys that like those, I mean, we don't, those we, shipping we cases and stuff, we call them nerds. We assume, we assume that they have stuff. three or four. And they're, um, yeah. So we assume there's a lot of stuff that back, walked out the back door just because like when you get – like the further you get into some of this stuff with Star Wars – I mean other collectibles are similar, but like in the Star Wars case, there's a lot of stuff you see sometimes where it's not only just too good to be true. It's like, oh, no, like you can you can trace it back because it, it walked out the back. Yeah. Well, out the back door for the last 40 years to not be open in that time. Yeah. That is still yeah, impressive. And it's still got the original labeling yeah. and stuff like that on it. I mean, there's yeah. some crazy stuff that you see when you go through some of these Star Wars stuff where you can actually you can actually take the Providence all the way back and find out that, yes, this came out of the store because that's exactly how it was shipped in. Those boxes were that. And, yeah, sure, maybe, in, like, I'm not saying – in Howard's case, I don't think it came out of the back door, of, by the way, of Burger King. I think probably they sent it to him because he's the VP of Lucas Films and everything, and they, they're like, hey, yeah, look, yeah. here it is. Yeah. And then he gets to check it out, see, make sure the packaging's right, make sure the shipping's right and all that. We're not saying that. We're saying that just in general, um, whatever your regional toy store was, there were Fair. people that were notorious for working at those toy stores. Oh, yeah. And there was – it was all over the place. I mean, it was a craze. You got to remember. It was like – just like the Beatles or anything else. Like I know they have like the Thursday night or Friday night Thanksgiving where people running and slamming each other down nowadays for toys. But that's not how it was back then. Back then, there was people to get in early because they didn't have those early hours and they wouldn't let everybody just stampede everybody. It were people picking up second and third jobs around the holidays just so that they could get toys and buy them so their kids could have toys or the guys could buy them so that they could have them for collectibles. So that was something that actually happened. Uh, talk some old, you know, old timers, they'll tell you about it. Then old timers love to talk. So I always suggest doing that. Let's move on though. Let's get to <laughs> and and yep. a good place to check. You're not going to get the whole set, but every now and then you're going to see one or two of these sitting on the shelf at your local uh, Goodwill. Yeah, where oh, yeah. I see them more than anywhere yep. else in the world. All right, look. If you're hunting for other things, these are things you can pick up really yep. quickly. You can clean them. They're glass. Yep. Throw them in the bleach real quick. Yep. And actually, they wash well. I mean, yeah. they, yep. Yeah. They wash well. Yep. All right. Oh, next oh, eventually, the eventually the paint will wear. Okay. But. It starts to look sun faded. Yeah, if you keep washing in your dishwasher, eventually it starts to look sun faded. But yeah, it takes a long washing. time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next up, uh, these, and I put them up here because I have a story of them. Uh, we'll start <laughs> off with them. They're the, uh, this one is the, they're the, the inflatable pop and bops, pop bops, whatever. Um, actually, I have a story about this one. When uh, the guy in my, the best man of my wedding and was in his wedding, he had his first kid. I found one of these for $20 at a secondhand store. 
I decided to give it to the kid, and he put it in the backyard, ran down a hill, jumped on it one time, and it exploded. And I probably shouldn't have done that because now I guess that same box would have got me two hundred dollars. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm notorious for letting kids play with toys because I love it. Uh, I really do. But uh, he actually had a couple different ones of these. So the the Vader one isn't so uncommon. The Vader one because everybody loved Vader and people would buy doubles of it because people were kind of into the collective mode at that point. You can find the Vader one. Obviously, I did. I mean, that was more. I've been married for over ten years and. He's been married, I think, eight years before me. So that's almost 20 years when I found it in the in the secondhand store. So I don't know if you're going to find it for 20 bucks anymore. They're probably more rare than that. Harder to find. But you can still go out there and find them. Maybe maybe you can. But you can find them online for 200 try. Bucks, So Yeah, you might as well try. The other On a personal the- <laughs> note, I just want to point out, I hated these toys because I lost every time. That thing would <laughs> bounce off the ground and come up and whack me in the face. No, I would yeah, go down every hard. time. Marvel had a product of those two and they were really good. Like they actually were really built well. I bought the the newer versions for my children for like the Avenger ones and the ones that give you the little beat around things and they aren't as good and you're supposed to put water. So the, the old ones were like thick and good. That's why I was surprised. Yeah. I mean, the kid had to come full steam down a hill. I think it was the third jump, jumped on it and then exploded. <laughs> it wasn't like it was like, you know. No, like, they were built. Yeah, oh, they were built to go. Things. They were built to go. That I would hammer it and it would hit the ground and come up and hit me in the face. And and I was a slow kid. It, <laughs> I, every time. Same, to practice. same thing. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, hit it, hit the ground and just stand there and wait for it. You know? Oh, well. I'm All smarter right. than that now. <laughs> so next up, then we next up we have the uh, obviously we have we got the R two D two. This one's through three twenty five. A little bit more rare than Darth Vader, because um, I think you know, like when you think about characters, I think Darth Vader did get played a lot with, but they also sold a lot of it. Wasn't quite the rarest. This one actually, I was surprised on the price of this because I have seen the R two before. This is one that I hadn't seen before. Uh, this was the Man. Jawa. It was not. It went for nine fifty. Nine fifty. I've never <sighs> seen. Wow. One. Man, I've never that's seen a monster. I didn't know I have not, Neither have I. Nine fifty. I, have, I haven't that's quite seen crazy. that before. I've never quite seen that before. I don't know what's going on with that, but maybe that's why. If I, if I was rich, I'd probably buy it because look at how. I mean, look at how cool. Look at how. Go back to the RT one. If, I, if you were rich, what would you buy? Well, that, I don't know. That, that, that inflatable Jawa bopper. <laughs> I would buy that. I really would. I mean, I know it's lunacy. The only problem I know is like because I've already been traumatized by the Darth Vader breaking. My kids would destroy that in the first bring, thirty seconds it came bring out. Bring the RT back up, real, real quick. Yeah. Check out that kid's pants. Oh yeah, dude. That's, uh, are you? That's, are you? Uh, <laughs> I just want you to know, Pete. Some of us grew up in this era. I, I grew up in and, that era. Uh, uh, that that. Kids. Some wild and crazy guys. Well, they are. So speaking yeah, of wild lot, and crazy, lots and of allure. Said, yeah, and I know I said I, I would buy the Jawa, but this thing. Yeah, oh, there he is. Monster, yeah. I mean, there you go. And Wookies and Wookies Wookie. I think this is another one that was. Blew expectations way out of the water. I think they were kind of. I we'd have to go back and ch- double check, but I think they were kind of expecting this to go for around, around the six hundred mark. Jawa, I think, did more than it was supposed to. The other two were kind of in the range, maybe a little bit up. But this Wookie blew blew it out of the water. Sixteen hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. wow. Sixteen. By wow. the way, if I remember way, correctly, isn't this one the biggest out of the whole set, the whole run of them? I think this one's taller by i want to say almost two or three inches i wouldn't know because i've never seen one of these before like i've never but i will tell you this this is also the, the worst box. Is that it is. this one's yeah. been open this one's been open before so they've obviously checked the bags for it before because like they came in so it's been open before i mean it's still they still call it sealed but this one has you can tell because the stress marks of, of where it is can we get that picture to full screen maybe we could be able to see it better maybe not but you can tell that there's stress marks in some of the uh, packaging. So you can tell that's been open before. Man. Let's man. put this into perspective for a second. Comic people are going crazy for what the market's doing right now for essentially stapled paper. But ladies and gentlemen, this is a balloon in a cardboard box. Sold for $1,600. There's a sandbag in there too. Yeah, it is a sandbag. But by the way, no, but time out. Time out. By the way, depending on what temperature these were stored in, if you try to blow it up, it may just actually 
fracture and explode. Yeah. 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 Like you don't know if it's even in good shape. Right. You yeah. don't know. Like you right. don't know. So I well, hey, look, 60, I have so, the same problem with my inflatables for pools and stuff. Because I have a I have a land speeder and a, and a the Millennium uh, Falcon. No, a Nabu um, Starfighter. Oh, mm. I got the Millennium Falcon. Uh, thanks, Star Producer Kevin. Uh, yeah, I want, I want that it. Falcon pretty bad. Dude, yeah, it's but nice. It's dope. It, it same problem with a lot of that stuff. Yeah, Although it that, does. The land speeder is probably my favorite. I do have the. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do kids stuff one time because I have the uh, the rider land speeder, the one the kids like the Hot Wheel that the kids can drive in. Oh, yeah. I usually use the coffee table. Oh, do you? Yeah, oh, yeah it's huge awesome. or whatever. It doesn't go that fast. I, I was going to re-rig the battering system, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> um, so that was it. Yeah, that Chewy, uh, I don't I don't understand it. Crazy, cool, but crazy, 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 crazy. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I want to say that that one was the biggest one by a couple inches. And I don't might, doubt it. That might help to part of the uh, – Price cost and difference. Maybe I, I think also, in the store it was also more expensive. Also, it's a fun it's character better size for an adult to blow it up yeah. now to play with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's just rarer. It must no, be I'm rarer. telling you though, because that I mean, it wasn't that. It probably was like 12 to 15 years ago when I pulled that Darth Vader out and blew it up with the sand in it and all. And it, I'm they were still built really well. I mean, I think it really was like a rock stick problem that ended up blowing it up. It wasn't the kid jumping on it, but like, <laughs> uh, hey Connor, if you're listening. It's okay. No, no worries. Um, hey, you had fun, Connor. Man, that was worth every penny. Do it again because I think he was like four or five. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, but that's it. Like, you know, it was already. You could tell it was built way better. It did take a lot. I mean, a lot to get through it. But these do hold up. So I would be wouldn't be surprised if it was in good condition. I would be yeah. surprised if it didn't deteriorate as much. But you got to think that Chewbacca. You know, always thinking the marketing sense of it, not what it is now, but it was back then. Chewbacca wasn't one of the main three. He wasn't one of the, well, the main five. You know, he wasn't there. He wasn't a Yoda. He wasn't a Darth Vader. He wasn't Luke Skywalker. He wasn't Leia and he wasn't Han Solo. So he's kind of a backup figure. How many of those were they actually pushing out to sell, especially with Kenner's quick mark? I mean, Kenner made a lot of mistakes as how they're mm, – that's not yeah. correct. That's, My that's man didn't wrong. even get a medal. Yeah, I mean, but they, they were put on tight, tight um, production lines. Yes. You know, you got to think toys yeah. a lot of times are like two years out and they, a lot of them, even, even after they already came out with the original one and maybe we'll get into the story of what happened in the first one, which was almost a crying shame, but even by Jedi, because they want to keep everything blue harvest and under wraps, Kenner wasn't getting a lot of the stuff of what was going to show up and everything. So throughout the whole movies, they did have to kind of rush up the scheduling of, of their, of their toy situations, but that's a whole nother show. That's a where's our rabbit hole because that's that's a deep deep rabbit that, hole there. That is a in fact they have even touched and placated a documentary about some of that on um, Netflix. Yeah, and that's a really really good good show to check out and get some of the that, that yep. storyline. Yep. Go ahead, Mike. And as as a segue from that, I actually interviewed that guy personally. Uh, that was on Toy Informer about that, and he tells the whole story of that. So we we may air that soon. That's never been aired. Um, I interviewed him last year, and I actually didn't think I was going to be bringing that up today. But um, oh, that's cool. Maybe yeah. we'll uh, maybe we'll throw that up if you guys, hey guys are interested you see it, in, in, yeah, uh, in checking comments, that out. Hit it up there. We yeah. get a couple likes. We might if we get two likes, we might we might think about doing it. Just two. That's all. Just two, a lot of likes. I don't know what a lot of likes are. I'm going to yeah, go on and I'm going to like it that's myself. Cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Shut up the number because I don't like it. No, no. So hey, hey, listen. I don't know how the yeah. liking works. I don't. But it is what it is. I think two sounds like a reasonable number for me because I really want to see that video. Well, so, if there's four sure. of us here, yeah, you have to I like go to. at least like six likes because not, if all not, four of us go least, like it. I guess it's got to be six. Yeah. Let's it's gotta be, then you got to get your two, so it's six. <laughs> next one, next toy. Here we go. Oh, yeah. wait. That's the same one. Next toy we're going to go into is this, and it's in the die cast line. So this is, mm. and when I say line, there's a big line. We might okay. spit it a little bit. This is the die cast land speeder. It's $200. Mike has teased a great story with this. Um, so let's see. Mike, just take <laughs> it away. Let's see what you got. It better be good. So uh, the die cast line is maybe not as sought after as the action figures were from Kenner, but they did try to do this line of vehicles. Um, and this particular one is uh, of import to me. Um, and the story I have about this, I guess I've teased this. Maybe I've made it out to be a little bit more than it was. Um, <laughs> but back when um, Brian's Toys was 
not quite as AFA heavy as it is now. They at one point got a bunch of negatives from the old Kenner, uh, one of the old Kenner employees. And they had them up really briefly. And I went up there, maybe I was a day late, and I got one of these negatives. And it's the negative for this photograph that they used on the Kenner packaging right there. Awesome. Um, which is rare enough and super cool, have an original Kenner negative uh, that they actually used on packaging. Um, and then that the same place where I interviewed a couple of other guys, I interviewed the photographer for the original Kenner photography. Um, his name is Kim Simmons. He is, uh, he, he puts out this book, which is called the man who shot Luke Skywalker, kind of a clever name. And it shows all of his Funny. photography, um, for the Kenner line all in here. And so I interviewed him and, and maybe I'll, we'll post that at some point. Um, but what was really awesome was I said, Hey man, I actually have a couple of these negatives when I met him. And he said, which negatives do you have? And I said, I have the one from one of the die cast land speeder ones. And I have uh, one of the, the force lightsaber ones. He goes, you know, I have never been able to locate the one for the land speeder. Can you please bring it back here? and let me take it home. I'll clean up the negative for you. I will print out a cleaned up version of the, of what it looks like oh, wow. and I'll sign it. <laughs> and, uh, and so we did an interview together and uh, it was really awesome to talk to him about it. He gave me a signed copy of his book and he gave me a cleaned up negative of this and he had never seen it before. He's the guy who shot this negative and he had never seen, or one of the, one of the two guys actually that shot these negatives. And this was, one of the lost ones. And here it was sitting in my collection. He was really excited to finally see it. And like I said, he cleaned up the negative and then did, did a really high res um, printout for me of this. This is the other one that I have. It's, it's this shot, which sort of got used. It got used on a prototype box for the force lightsaber, but never for the production version. Um, and what's interesting about this is I look identical to this kid when I'm this kid's <laughs> age. Um, but it was really cool to meet Kim Simmons. Um, and that's a he, by the way, Kim, um, Kim Simmons. Very, very cool guy. Very um, forthcoming with information. And uh, this book is amazing. If you are a fan of the Kenner toy packaging, you need to get this book. Again, it's called The Man Who Shot Lou Skywalker uh, by Kim David McNeil Simmons. Uh, Kenner Star Wars pho uh, photography, 1977 to 1979, and it is literally everything, including um, you know, e sort of extra versions of photographs that you didn't where, see on packaging that never made it. That book? Do you got to go? Is uh, that you have to get it from him. From, I think from his website only. I think it's the only place you can get it. It is the man who shot Luke Skywalker dot com. Okay. So real quickly, uh, that went for two hundred dollars, sealed two. Mike, I have a question: Is the they have are the figures loose in there? I mean, I know it's in the packaging, but the figures is uh, Luke and Owen, and are they loose? Because well, it's they are not. Diecast, and maybe we'll do a diecast line, guys. If you want, once again, I know I'm saying it a lot on this one. If you want to hear it, but I think we're going to do it as a diecast line because I know, like, in some of them, they did have uh, loose parts, like the Star Destroyer. Yeah, so those are. Still you can there. see that you can see the figures. They're not. They're not loose figures, though. They okay, are. Cool. They are Molded. attached. Yeah, so, so if some of those missing, it means the toy's broken. Broken. Okay, cool. Yeah, so maybe we will get in the diecast line. That's a cool line. It's not completely huge, but there is there is some good pieces in the diecast line, and you can come across those still because they actually held up really, really well. And actually, the paint, even when you find them loose, hold up really well, in my opinion. When I've seen a lot of them, uh, it doesn't yep. take a lot of checking and everything like that. The last thing we're gonna get into is, and uh, this might be a little uh, bit familiar to people. Yes. This is the Imperial Troop transport. This is boxed, sealed. 550 I can't believe it. $550 wow. for this thing, man. Uh, and, you, and you know what? Like, hey, listen, you know those little side things? Because the side things were detachable, right? Like, if you look at the thing where they have this, yeah. got a, those mm -hmm. side things were detachable, so those were missing all the time. The top was, but like, it, it's not. Everybody had this toy, right? Like, because it, it, it ended up going mm -hmm. cheap because nobody wanted this toy because all it was nope. was put the, it was to put the, the the troops in the side or whatever. Well, you know? that was one of the points I was going to make is that that toy did not sell well. Everyone had one, but it wasn't a big toy back in the day growing up but because it wasn't in the movie. movie. Yeah, because it, it wasn't in the movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it was not in the movie. It was not in any of the stuff, and it's not in any of the movies. But then you fast forward to today. In Rebels, they showed that that carrier or yep. a version of that over and over and over and <laughs> over, and now it is a hot toy. Yeah, so they, I think it. I and think they it used it in Mandalorian. 
They yeah. did. So I think in Rebels it shows up when they're on. Speaking of Mandalorian, I think Rebels it shows up on uh, when they're in Mandalore. It, well, when the Ren family is trying to uh, remember the Rebels are going in and they're trying to release the dad. Right? Isn't that where it shows up the first time? Is that because they have a chase? I something think like that. That's the first one. Yeah. When I think it's somewhere around there. On the and then yeah, you're right, Mike. Then it shows up again. It shows up again in the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. When, when does yep. it show? It's when Gideon's there and they're bringing him into yeah, right the bar, yep. correct? Yep, exactly. So they were using this thing, but I. So listen, when we grew up, we didn't get a lot. We, a lot of our toys came from a place called. Do you guys have big lots and odd lots out there? Odd lot. We had odd lot. Mm-hmm. So we had that. It's a discount chain. That's where we got a lot of our toys. I, yep. got, I got three brothers. Cool. I think we're talking about it. You know, doing a, a picture thing where we show a couple of Christmases or a couple of old pictures with us for some of our toys, just do a fun little two minute episode or whatever kind of stuff we remember. And that's where we got a lot of our stuff. So a lot of the the those figures like something that didn't sell were stuff that i got when i was a kid and i remember getting the troop transport i remember getting agitated too because those side pieces you gotta look for them too that's another one too those side pieces were a clip in side pieces yep um it was a terror i mean it wasn't a great toy for a kid it (laughs) It made sound it made sounds though it did make sounds which is which which is another point that we didn't bring up and why kind of that sand crawler is in there make guys when you're buying a lot of these uh too when you're looking at them especially if they're loose and open a lot of them the at tat walker i don't and so many that sand crawler check the battery situation okay yeah. even if it's bad it's still worth buying but make sure you pop that down some of it can be cleaned off some of it has rusted so bad that the actual springs yeah. are breaking off on it that's yep. the worst case scenario maybe we'll go over a battery situation one time but there's different degrees of it some of them are easier to fix than others um don't really deter from the value but sometimes, especially if people let the batteries explode multiple times and then it got hot and wet, it completely d- deteriorates the coils, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. And once they start, yeah, and once that starts happening with the connector piece, it's pretty much completely ruined, yeah, which is unfortunate if it seeps in past the plastic. So, but still look for them. And just because there is a little bit of, uh, you know, rust or deterioration, or even if some of the coils are broken off, sometimes you can replace the coils on some of these things. It's not as easy with Radio Shacks not being around as much. But Yeah, I was just going to say, back in the day, Radio Shacks, you could go buy the new tabs, and they were exactly the same as the old ones. It was kind of a universal, universal fit kind of thing. And they had 10 or 15 different ones, and with the springs, you know, and you could buy new ones and put them in. But with Radio Shacks gone, that that makes it hard. And then you got a purple label. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, geez. Exactly. But nice. it still good, worked, and you could play analogy. with it and hear the, yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I mean, it's cool, it, especially with those open ones, it's kind of cool if you can tinker around with them a little bit and you're not going to lose it. That one, I don't know if I said it already, went for 550 which was a surprising yeah. sale for me because I think I, when I brought it up, I was like, how the heck did that thing go for 550 and Mike goes, well, because it's in everything now. Like, it's literally yeah. in everything. And, I, and he's right. You know, they have it in all the new shows. Yeah, That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool that these guys are going back and bringing not just, like, the big toys or the big, like, the ATSTs to the new shows. That they're going back there and they're digging out these well, blue light makes, special. Yeah, the more obscure toy that you could confuse for a Battlestar Galactica toy if it didn't have the Star Wars box. He's looking right. at it. I don't know what this is from. Well, I mean, Kenner... Kenner knew right away. Kenner knew right away that they needed to they needed to bulk out the line, and they continued to do this all the way through the line of toys with their uh, mini rigs. Yep. Is they had their own design teams making extra toys at different price points. Not every kid could afford a fifty dollar at at in the nineteen eighties, mm-hmm. so you had to give them a little ten dollar version of something like that. So you know there were smaller versions of like there's you know there's the there's the Imperial shuttle right the enormous box thing. <laughs> That had, I don't even know what that thing cost in the store, but there's like a little mini rig version too that you can get your hands on that was like ten bucks or eight bucks in the in the store. So the um, it didn't version, exist the in the movie. Plastic version? Um, yeah, the smaller plastic version, right? The, the when when they shrink it down. Yes, yeah, with the little with the little cockpit that opened up. And, there's a whole line of those too. Yeah. Yep. yeah, and then they had the they also had oh man, we're, we're I'll stop it after this because it's going to get too deep into dive. Maybe that's something. <laughs> yeah. So they also even like what you know you had you had the Yoda you had uh, Dagobah where you had the Yoda with the boxes up, but then you also had the they sold it in the toy section, but it was kind of like a paint a paint yourself kit type thing where it was like Luke and Yoda in a Dagobah and it was a plane, and they had that whole line. So you're right, the price, point, the price point it wasn't quite a paint by number, but yes, it uh, they give you the little capsules and you could paintbrush mm-hmm. it. But the, the price points across the board on these 
were very different. They would downscale and upscale some of these things, and it was cool. So they, I mean, it was Star Wars, as much as people love the movies, really was a merchandising, like, that's what it was about. It was about how much you could merchandise, and I think we've seen some of the failures. And maybe we'll go over merchandising before. Some of the failures yeah. that they've done in the past uh, with that, as far as toy guys that we like or, or Star Wars guys that we like and like how they've released stuff wrong and, and some toys that they've overlooked even in the modern era. And like they have, that's the one thing about yep. Star Wars though. It's kind of funny. Like they, and I wasn't even going to talk about this, but like they were restricted in the first part and, and it hurt a lot of their merchandising, right? Like they, there's some really things that I didn't agree with merchandising wise and probably, but also probably cause I probably wanted it cheaper and I couldn't get some of the stuff but they could have come out with a lot of other stuff and there's toys that you see in every single line that they have that didn't show, actually show up in the movies or, or they, they messed up putting out and it's not what it looks like, or it's a couple inches bigger or whatever, different coloring and stuff like that. And you'd figure by the time they'd get to this era that they would have fixed merchandising problems with toys and they still haven't fixed merchandising problems. No, no. <laughs> I mean, well, guys, we, we never got, a, we never got a grand Moff Tarkin figure. In the vintage line, no. how did we never get a Grand Moff Tarkin figure? <laughs> did it? Did they what end up in the world? Did they yeah. end up putting that in when they re-released the Star Wars Death Star game or whatever it was called? Remember the board game that they had, where you had the X wings that you could play? Yeah, the in? retro game. Well, yeah, when they did the retro yep. game, didn't they end up releasing with the, Tarkin. the Tarkin figure in that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They can digitally re-add them back into a movie, but no, no figure. No figure. <laughs> well, they, they did. I mean, but that's figure. where they put. <laughs> But that's but, where they put the action figure. They did. They put it with a board game, though. They put it with yeah, a I mean, thing. honestly, we also have to think about uh, other than uh, Star Wars is number one. It's the most branded e explosion of merchandise in the world. There's no other toy line. There's no other comic book. There's no other movie series. There's no. There's nothing else in the world. In fact, <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm regret that saying this. The only thing that I know that is maybe merchandised as well or as close, it's nowhere close, but as close as Star Wars. Don't say my little kitty. It would be Kiss. Wow. Oh, yeah, Kiss. Yeah. Well, yeah, Disney. Disney. Yeah. Disney, like Mickey Mouse Disney does stuff. too. Yeah. Sure, Disney, Disney does but releases. yeah. But I mean, but even, Star Wars is the number one. They have more than anything. So. It, it, I, but this, so this is the thing. But this is the thing where it comes. To, uh, I was gonna get into this, but now I'm gonna get into it. All right. So this is the, this is the thing with the, the child or whatever the new thing they're coming out, and where people are like, "Oh well, Disney just missed it. Like it was because they were keeping it covered under wraps. They don't make these things for under wraps. They make it under wraps then to release it, and and to have places like discount stores doing knockoff T-shirts selling way before you have any official merchandise. That isn't somebody keeping under wraps. That's a screw up in merchandising. Yeah, yeah. huge. If, if you can't sell that, you're you're right around Christmas time, and you have what is this? It's not the seventies again. We're we're yeah. replaying what happened again. Yeah, I know yeah. you're patting it next to it, but they let the they let the bootleg market get into that, and and they threw it, and it's Disney too now. It's not even like, yeah. but the curse of merchandising with Star Wars is real. I, and I'm and probably should write a book about that because if like, this I, was out of Christmas time. Like my son wanted one, my wife wanted one. Like everybody would have been able to buy it, and I ordered it around Christmas time. But we got this what May, June, yeah, yeah. Finally got released, so yeah, yeah, it's still cool. But they could have done so much more had they Six been run too late. That's the mail. Yeah. That's the mail order. That's the mail order uh, figure set from Star. Yep. From early Star early bird pack. The empty, no, the, em no. the empty envelope. The empty <laughs> empty, empty box. Empty box for Christmas. But that the you know early that's bird it. Like, child. And maybe yeah. we'll get into that when we start talking about some of their lines thing, but it seems like for some reason, as much as people always want to say that Star Wars is changing or not my Star Wars or this or that, Star Wars is for everybody, maybe not for you, but it always repeats itself. It's a repeating story that keeps going over and over again, and it yeah. happens through their merchandising, it happens through their story writing, it happens through their TV shows, what they want to have as TV shows, what they don't, what they're trying to say, like, well, that's technically not canon anymore, or I don't ever want to see cough cough the christmas special again because that's really <laughs> not my intent like you know all these little things you see it and for some reason no matter how hard they try and maybe that's why i love it because like no matter how hard yeah. they try it's very comforting because the same yeah. thing is going to happen again familiarity it's 20 comforting. years from now 20 years from now they're going to screw up another toy line uh, another portion of the toy line they're going to yep. do it it's going to happen again 
and that was definitely a screw up on the. Uh, that was definitely a screw up on the child. Uh, they they, I. Million. It is what it is. Maybe we'll get Million. into a live show or something like that, and we'll start talking about more of our opinion based on some of these things. But yeah, uh, that'll, be that def- fun, that'll be a fun one. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely that's definitely a, a mark that I'd mark up on there as a. Well, you probably shouldn't have done that, but whatever. I mean, <laughs> hey, look, they're still making billions of dollars. It's not me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, get out there, guys. Go to your local toy spots. I know right now you're probably seeing this a little bit later, but there probably was resets that were just done because it's around that season. It's late summer right now. They've done the resets. Look for those uh, Boba Fett uh, Lego helmet things. They're pretty cool. There's a lot of new stuff that's coming on down the line. I know because this COVID thing, two of the exclusives are coming out of the, the Disney parks and they're coming down to your local stores. Yep. Make sure you check those out. They're really cool. There's some cool stuff. Mm. We're not going to cover those. Um, do it by yourself. But uh, pre-orders, as soon as they shot them out, a lot of the pre-order stuff was gone. So it's probably right around now they'll be restocking on those. Look for that type of stuff out there too. More toy li- parts of the toy lines you want to cover down in the section. Wookie, what's our thing here? Tell them what to do. Force push that subscribe button. Force choke that like. And saber smash that bell so you can see all these handsome faces on this side of the galaxy. Yeah, and hey, once again, last part of it, may the force be with you. Always. Really quickly, always, real quickly, I really enjoyed this, guys. Thanks a lot. This is really fun. Um, Thank you. I can't stop smiling because, like, the other stuff that I do here, you know, uh, <laughs> it's usually just me remembering, like, stuff I read or whatever. Like, this is, like, oh, stuff I really wanted or, like, stuff that I played with. And it's kind of, yeah. like, it gives me that giddy childhood thing, man. So, like, yeah, I, me too. It's you know, this, if you, I, I love doing the other stuff because I know people ask questions about the other stuff, and I, I'll talk Star Wars all day long. But this type of stuff right here, when when we really start talking about this, I mean, you know, the other stuff will show you like fandom kind of stuff, but like this stuff right here is the live it every day, love it, found it in a thing, had the little story. Man, there's so many stories. Like this could have been a two hour thing. Just on oh, easy. oh, easy, oh, easy, easy. You know, there was tons of extra stories on a lot of this stuff and guys we're going to try to get it out to you i hope you enjoyed it as much as we did i i think the smiles and the laughs were coming out we were laughing just going into this one <laughs> so it's crazy um once again guys thank you thank you very much dude because this was a great show i really enjoyed it yeah. this is probably one of my yeah, favorite. yeah. thank all you right, me guys. too all right thanks appreciate it yep see you guys later